Sundance organizers, they were super pumped because there's so many amazing musical documentaries in this year's festival. Because what that did, it brought people from so many different mediums together. Case in point, Sound City by first time director, Mr. Dave Grohl. When you walk into Sound City, you either love it or you hate it. But walking down the hallway and seeing all of those platinum records on the wall, that's what I'm talking about. Tom Petty. Fleetwood Mac. Neil Young, man. Cheap Trick. Chili Peppers. Pat Benatar. Guns N' Roses. Nine Inch Nails. Before I Earth. Rap. Johnny Cash. Metallica. Dude, how many music albums have been made there? Who chose Sound City because Nevermind was recorded there? <laughs> This guy, Rupert Neve, designed these next generation consoles. There's only four like this in the world. I thought that board would just go straight to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So when you <laughs> when you got the call that uh, they were selling you the board, is yeah. that when this whole snowball kind of started? Yes. The director and it was also right around the 20th anniversary of Nirvana. Of uh, never mind. Excuse me. It was. Uh, it was maybe a, I don't know, a year and a half ago. The 20th anniversary of Nevermind was coming up. The studio was closing. I bought the board and I thought, wow, well, what an incredible thing. The board that is responsible for the person that I am now is, I, I'm reunited with it and, and around the 20th anniversary of Nevermind. So I'll just make like this little short film to talk about that and how important that is to me. And so I went to the studio people, to the people that ran the studio. I said, give me a list of all the, uh, people that have made records here. Grohl called more than 40 artists on the list. Everybody wanted to be part of the documentary. When he explained it, you know, he said, oh, there's been a lot of great music gone through that board, and, and it started out just interviews. You know, he just wanted to do interviews of people who'd recorded through the hits through the board, and it grew into this thing of, well, then he said, well, now I want to, let's put artists together and have them write, like, a song, and then we'll go and do premieres and we'll play, and it blew up into this huge thing. And the gnarly couch, the, the fuzzy walls, like, it felt like visiting someone's, like, 70s bunker. Like, it really did. Like, it's like some evil Bond villain from the 70s lived there, you know, but the, the cool thing was is like you could feel the history of the place. Even Fleetwood Mac veteran Stevie Nicks took part after overcoming her own reluctance to be on camera. I don't love being filmed and I don't love all the stuff that you have to think about instead of thinking about your music. I don't love the whole vanity thing. It bu bugs me. And so, you know, that's not something, like, I never want to be a movie star. It's just not in my thing. Just the rock star. But, thank you. But the rock star is okay, because you don't have to do that that much. You know, you really just have to work on your music, and that's really where my heart is. So, but this is all very much fun. Now, it's a long way from L.A. Sound City to Alabama's Muscle Shoals, but both were hotbeds for music and subjects for a documentary at this year's Sundance Festival this idea that this was happening in sort of the belly of the beast of American racism during you know one of the sort of worst times and the fact that you know you had these black and white musicians coming together in that environment in that time just like making great music together was so cool and so special and directed by Greg Freddy Camelier it's the story of how the studios in that small town nurtured talents like Percy Sledge who sang as he picked cotton in nearby fields. Recognizing his talents, a star was soon born. And soon, musical artists from around the world were knocking on the doors in Muscle Shoals. We just felt incredibly blessed and lucky no to have all these great musicians you know, take their time to share their stories with us. We knew how special that was, and we just felt honored and, you know, wanted to do a good job. And then there was 20 Feet from Stardom, the Morgan Neville documentary about those backup singers whose careers were spent at the corners of the spotlight, not getting their due until now. And those singers, like Darlene Love, Tata Vega, and Judith Hill, performed at a special show during Sundance. Hey, All right, let's keep this music thing rolling. We talked about Dave Grohl. There was another music legend in town, Ringo Starr. Now, he wasn't bringing a musical documentary. He was here to support his stepdaughter, Francesca Gregorini. Now, Francesca, she has a film in the fest called Emmanuel and the Truth About Fishes. She's a first-time director. Were you nervous the first day when you were getting ready to shoot as a first-time director? Um, I was, but I mean, this is quite nerve-wracking too, but at least it's in the can. So it's like, you know, the movie's done and this is just sort of like, you know, the excitement. The buzz on Main Street in Park City continues as the 2013 edition of the Sundance Film Festival 
rolls along. When we come back, we'll look at some life-changing documentaries, including one from one of Canada's top talents, Sarah Pauly.